Hello everyone, welcome to the Comic Gamer Movie Show. My name is Deshaun and today I'm, I really want to sit here and talk about because there is a rumor running around that Fanta that Marvel is already working, which it's not a sh which it shouldn't be a shocker that Marvel is already working on a Fantastic Four script. And they're already and they're looking and they're aiming for a 2022 date, which would be 3 years from now. They're aiming for it, which would be about two and a half years from now, about right now. Maybe three years from now, but they're aiming for a twenty two um, a twenty twenty two date. So two or three years from now, they're already working on a script, and Peyton Reed is being is pushing to direct it. If you don't know who Peyton Reed is, Peyton Reed's the guy who's directed Ant Man one and two. He's also directed some other. He's also directed, I believe, Peyton Reed either wrote or was a part of Anchorman. So Peyton Reed's, you know. He's been wanting. To, he's been pitching a Fantastic Four movie for a long time. But I'm gonna make this movie. I mean, this movie. This um video talking about why the Fantastic Four will be will be will be the much easier, smoother transition into the MCU, and why and why it will be the first Fox property integrated into the MCU, and why it will be the first and why it will be easily integrated, and while. And why you should look forward to things showing up sooner rather than later. Now, when it comes to X Men, it's gonna be a longer it's gonna be a longer card play. But Fantastic Four is gonna fit like a glove. Now, I don't know if I made this video before. I don't think I have. But I'm gonna just go out on a limb and tell you this right now: the Fantastic Four were born to be in the MCU. Like that. Like first of all. Marvel is owned by Disney, and Disney's all about family and, you know, family lessons and, and, and family stuff in general. Disney's all about family stuff, Disneyland, the parks, it's all about that stuff. And what is more family than uh, than the Fantastic Four? There are literally a family of, they're, they're literally a family. It can, it's literally a family adventure. That's what Disney's all about. So the Fantastic Four is going to fit right in. It's easy. Now that Tony Stark is, um, now that Tony Stark is gone, Reed Richards can slip right in as the new smartest person in, on the planet, which in the comic books, he is the smartest, you know, person on the planet. Um, Sue Storm's going to add another powerful female heroine to the, to the, um, rogues gallery. Um, Ben Grimm's going to add another powerhouse. Um, and, and Johnny's gonna add another charismatic character to play off of Spider-Man, to play off of Chris Pratt, to play off of, um, Chris Hemsworth, to play off of Star-Lord and Thor, and all these other characters. Johnny's gonna be another charismatic character to play into that. And we get another team in the MCU. We get another built-in team at that. A team that you don't, a team not like Guardians. And the thing that makes, um, Fantastic Four so much different from Guardians is... That the Guardians of the Galaxy are ragtag family. They're outcasts. They're um, nobodies who found each other. They're nobodies with. They're, they're nobodies with, and they each have a particular particular set of skills. But they're nobody who had nothing until so they and all they have is each other. But the Fantastic Four is a family by choice. Um, ben and um, Ben Graham and um, Reed Richards are friends. Um, you know, Ben and Reed are best friends. Like, they are each other's best friends. They've known each other forever. Re in fact, Ben used to stand up for Reed. Like, Ben used to stand up for Reed in high school. Like, they, they've known each other forever. Johnny and Sue are brother and sister. Johnny, Johnny, I mean, um, Reed marries Sue Storm. And eventually, and then that makes Johnny Reed's, you know, brother. Like, you know, you know, <laughs> that makes Reed Johnny's, you know, brother. So, they're family. Like, I mean, fucking Ben's the godfather of um, Reed and Sue's children. And also, he's, he's pretty much like an uncle, man. Like, so, the thing is, they are real family by choice. They're family in a way that you could see happening, like, in ordinary life. So, that aspect of it is going to be great. It's like the family adventures. Because, and the thing, too, about the Fantastic Four is they can play up an aspect of the Marvel Universe that really hasn't been played up enough, which is... Just the adventure. The, it, like, because every other Marvel movie to me, you know, every, most Marvel movies inside of it, you know, Ant-Man's a heist movie that's an action adventure. Black Panther's a, I mean, Captain, Captain America Winter Soldier's a political thriller that is an action adventure. 
But this might be the first movie that can be an adventure action movie. Because the adventure is part of Reed just coming up with these elaborate experiments and doing them and then shit happens and then they have to react from it. Or Reed opening up a portal to another dimension and then going through it and having to figure out a way back. Like there are so many times in comic books in the show Earth Mighty's Heroes where literally it'll be in a comic, even not in that, just a random Spider-Man comic. You're just reading a random Spider-Man comic and Spider-Man's like, you know, maybe I should see what Reed's doing. And then again, that guy's probably stuck in a portal somewhere. Like, because they're always off. The Fantastic Four is something brilliant that they've written about them that I love it because it's a good way to just get them out of the picture. They're always off on another planet or in another universe or doing some crazy experimentation. or They're always doing stuff because Reed's a scientist who just loves doing experiment, just fun experiments. Because Reed is going to bring such a different vibe because Reed is the classic scientist. He's not the cool scientist. He's not the he's not the morose scientist who feels bad about his creations. He's not the humanitarian scientist. Reed is like pure, um, driven, confident. I'm about my numbers. I'm about my science. And the only thing keeping him from being like Doctor Doom level of um, and the only thing keeping him from being Doctor Doom is his family. And that's what they have to capture. It's the most important thing, and I, I know some people, but to me, the most important thing that Marvel has to capture in their version of Fantastic Four is you have to give off the vibe that Reed cares way too much about his work. That's got to be a key factor. You have to make it. You have to make people feel like, because to me, that's kind of Reed Richards in one on one. Is he cares so much about science? Is that Reed battles every day because there's a part of him. And it's the small part, and you know, his heart and his love for his family, his love for his wife, and his love for his kids always went out. Usually wins out. But there's a part of him that loves the science and the numbers over anything, all else. Anything else. And, like, his family and, like, Sue and Johnny and Ben have to always remind him that there is more to life than just this. They're the grounding forces that keep him... From forgetting who he is. And without them, Reed, um, I believe there was a storyline not too long ago where it was like an alternate reality version of Reed who didn't have them. And he became a supervillain. He became the villain of that comic book art. He became this villain. They didn't know. And then it was kind of one of those flash moments where it's like, oh my goodness, it's Barry. And like, he became a villain. And it was kind of just showing like, without, the, like, this is what he could would become. But you have to get that in there. That vibe that if that, that because that's Reed's thing. It's like he's always experimenting, and like how many times in the comic books have you seen Sue like, "Hey Reed, like, hey Reed, um, want to go sell? What, Reed, Reed want to go out and do this or do that, and do this?" He's like, "Um, yeah, um, I don't know if I could do that, Sue." And he's like got his head in a fucking telescope. Like that is Reed Richards. He's not Tony Stark, and I think he's gonna get, add a different vibe because Tony was cool science guy. He's cool science guy with all these hot chicks, and he just you know he stay up all night. He he, he bang hot chicks then wake up in like two hours later and then work on stuff and you talk shit to people cool science guy hank pym was more private and more he was a little bit more private and you know he's kind of a dick at times um and then you got bruce who who's kind of morose and kind of just like i don't know if i want to do he's like he's trying to be more humanitarian you know he he, he he doesn't he tries not to get too caught up in the science he thinks about the consequences of it even though something even though he can get talked into it he, he's more, you know, grounded. And you got Shiri, who's more pippy, and all she sees are the positive. All Shiri sees are the positive things of science and things that she can do. And she's so young, and she doesn't quite understand. But Reed is just, he's the best. And I hope they hit you over the head with that. Johnny is another one who there who could be a scene stealer. If they're casting him right, Johnny Storm could be like fucking Star-Lord. If they cast it correctly, Johnny Storm could be like Star Lord slash Thor in that Star Lord Thor department, which he should be in. The wise cracking, just he should be the scene stealer if they're doing this correctly. Ben should be the heart if they're doing this correctly as well. Ben should be the heart, and Sue should be the backbone. She should be the stabling force. Now I know nowadays there's a little stigma against having them, like, because I've seen it kind of lean, um, people kind of talk shit about Gamora, but not about her character, but about the fact, oh, of course, she's the, she's the one female, of course, she's the female who's got it together while the boys are all stupid, and, like, at first I was like, 
well, Jesus, man. <laughs> I was like, what do you want? Like, like, and I, and I was like, okay, I guess that's, like, because, like, so I got this gut feeling that if they make, because, like, in the comics, that's what Sue's always been. She's been the mother of the group. She's been the one holding everything together. She's the one who made Ben, ben feel better about himself after the transformation. She's the one who bring, who, who puts out Johnny's fires whenever he starts something. She's the one who talks, um, Reed, who always brings Reed back when he gets on the edge of just great numbers in science. Sue Storm is the one who does that invisible woman. And also, in the comics, her powers, invisible woman is more powerful than people think. In fact, her powers, the, the, the things she can do with those shields are only limited by by her by the amount of pain she's willing to put up with by the pain she's willing to put up with and by and by her emotional state because she can put up some force fields she can do some shit with those things and like i said and, and like i said like that's why i feel like just like they're gonna hit that all, all over the head too a little bit but like I said, I, I'm, I think the Fantastic Four is going to slip right into the MCU. It's a new team, it, it you know, and then they come with Doctor Doom and Galactus, which I might make a separate video about about my theory about Galactus, a little, and, and I'm make a separate video about my theory about Galactus. But they're bringing Doctor Doom and, and Galactus now. Marvel could do the Super Scrolls too. So when Captain Marvel two eventually comes out, you can have the Super Scrolls in there. So and like there's so many things they can set up and they can do once they got the Fantastic Four in house. Um, and I, I buy this rumor that it's coming out soon because Fantastic Four is too easy. It's too easy. All you gotta do is put together the right cast. And the script writes itself. Family Adventure. Now, I don't know. There's many ways they can go about this. There's really to me only three ways. Either A, they always been around, which doesn't really work because Reed's such a genius that you feel like he would have been brought on to do something eventually. So either A, they've always been around, and the only way you can go about that to make it fit is if you make Reed super young, which I don't want to see a super young Reed anymore. Like, it's bad enough I'm never going to get to see Reed have a conversation with Tony Stark in this world, which is upsetting every time I think about it. But I don't want to see a super young Reed, so I'm not going to be able to go with that. Or you can make it one of those things, which they won't do, or you can make it another period piece, and something happens, and they end up here. It could kind of be more, it could kind of be sort of Captain America. It won't be Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel just lived through the last 20 years and she just doesn't age because of her DNA. But we can kind of harken back to um, Captain America, the first Avenger and just my, what I would do, what I would do, because they're not in the history books and the Fantastic Four, one of the cool things about them are they are super public. They are super public. They got big Baxter building and everything. They are super public. Um... The only thing you could do, in my opinion, and this is how I would go with it, and this is how I'm thinking they're going to go, is that they make the first movie a period piece. Or not a period piece, but they make it one of those movies where they go in outer space, they do the whole thing, the entire origin is the same. They go into outer space, and the shuttle disappears. Everyone thinks they're blown up, and the shuttle looks like it blew up, and they're dead. And then, crack, 2022 or whatever, whenever year they end up coming out with it, 2022 or whenever year they end up coming out with this movie, boom, they, they pop out of the portal, they're changed, and they're in a completely different world now. And it, it, I think that can work. You know, that way you can give them a different vibe. They're out of time. They're, they're people out of time now. Because Captain Marvel wasn't a woman out of time. You know, she's, you know, she adjusted pretty well to being back on Earth. She, well, you know, she wasn't really on Earth that long. She's not a woman out of time. She's just, she just hasn't been on Earth. Captain America was a man out of time. So it'd be interesting. You take that Captain America thing and push it even further. What happens, that's what happens when a man as good as Captain America's out of time. What happens when an entire family's out of time? Cool thing is, you could do some shit where, like, Maybe they maybe they went out of space and disappeared during the seventies. So then you can have well, one you can have Hank Pym, young Hank Pym show up in this too. So but maybe they disappeared during the seventies. And you know think about the how how marriages worked back then in the set in the seventies and how the vibe that they were and how. Maybe they disappeared in the seventies and they popped back out of the portal and now they are just like. Where the fuck are we? 
Is that thing moving? What is happening with this world? They are freaking out. I can definitely see it. Um, but those are just a couple of things I'm throwing out here. I think Fantastic Four has a great potential. Um, I can't wait to see what Marvel does do with it. Those are a couple of my thoughts on it. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because there's been a thing come, rumor coming out. And from a big source, from a reputable source who's broken a lot of real things before and shot down a lot of real shit, shit things. So I believe this guy, I follow him on Instagram. He's got a blue check next to his name. And I've seen other sources kind of condole his thing. So Fantastic Four is coming soon. So those are some of my thoughts on the Fantastic Four movie coming soon. I hope it works out. Thank you for joining me in the Comic Game Movie Show. Please remember to like and subscribe and follow and uh, well, not follow me. Please remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.